Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. We're in the A10C2 and we're looking at the cockpit controls. Note that this will be 99% the same as the A10C1 Warthog, but it has a few additional things. The way we'll do this is we'll start from this left panel, work up that panel there, then work up that panel there. These are known as the consoles, the left and the right. Then we'll work across what I call the dashboard here. Quick look up on the hub there and the UFC and around the bow. Then stick and behind the stick. And then we'll look at the right console along here and along here. This is going to take about an hour because it's a very big cockpit. So get your coffee and let's get going. Let's get started. We're on the far left console here at the back. So first of all, everyone's most favorite button here. Under the cover, turn it on, allows us to fire our GAL-8 cannon on the ground, which is pretty cool. Next, we have here the IFF antenna. Do we want to use our upper antenna or our lower antenna or both? Has no function in DCS, does in the real aircraft. UHF radio, do we want to use upper antenna or lower antenna? Again, no function in the game. Next, EGI, HQ, TOD, enable. Okay, half quick is an ECM resistant frequency hopping system used to protect military aeronautical mobile or radio traffic. Roger. Now, it's not mentioned in the DCS manual, so as far as we're aware, it doesn't actually do anything in DCS. Next up to the stall warning panel. We've got two knobs here, which are the audible volume of the stall warnings. There's two. One's called the peak performance and one's called the normal stall warning, and you can turn them up or down depending on how loud you want that tone. Next is this panel here. The name of the panel will be here, and you can see this one is called Intel Intercom. First, we have a master volume clockwise to turn up currently at max next we have the master mode selector we've got on this aircraft an intercom so that's going to allow us to talk to our ground crew an fm radio that's going to allow us to talk to tanks and jtacs and stuff on the ground vhf that is for general purpose communications and we've got high frequency here we're pretty sure it actually means uhf because we've got a uhf radio as well again for general purpose and flight comms you can only use one radio at a time, so turning the dial, you can choose which one you're going to use. Next, we've got a series of volume buttons. Each one of these can be pushed in and pulled out. Pulled out means I'm going to get it to work. Pulled out means it's turned on. That means it's turned off. Uh, HM, hot mic. Do we want a hot mic? A hot mic means that the pilot can speak without pushing a button to speak, and it will work like that. Intercom volume, FM radio volume, VHF radio volume, UHF radio volume and you can rotate these with the mouse scroll once they're pulled out by the way. IFF volume that's not going to be modeled in DCS. ILS radio selector and volume you're going to hear beeps for the identifier for the ILS and for the TACAM same thing on or off volume up or down you're going to hear beep morse code for the TACAM morse code identifier. The next panel forward is the emergency flight control panel. What we've got here is emergency overrides for well, the control of the aircraft. Start with trim. If there's a problem with the trim system, we can go to the emergency override here and then trim, and then trim wing left down, wing right down, nose up, nose down. Uh, this is the emergency speed brake retract. So if we have a problem retracting the speed brake, that's another way of doing it. Elevator emergency disengage. So the elevators, and this is going to apply to the ailerons here as well independently. So the elevators are linked together, the two elevators. If there's a problem and you want to unlink them, let's say we want to unlink the left here, then we can go left and manually unlink the left so that we at least have control of one of the elevators. Same works here. We can unlink the left or the right so that if there's a problem, we can disengage the link between them. Uh, flap again problems raising the flaps another emergency way of raising them and finally everyone's second favorite button the manual reversion if there's a hydraulic problem with the main control system then you can go back to cables and pulleys with a manual reversion which is one of the reasons this plane is so hard to shoot down I guess you'd say next is the IFF identification friend or foe panel all these buttons are turnable and switchable at the moment however at the time of making this video, IFF is not modelled to the fidelity where any of this actually does anything. That may change in the future, and then this will have function, but at the moment, no function, so we'll ignore it. Next up from the IFF panel, SAS, Stability Augmentation Panel. It's normal for an aircraft of this age to have, if not fly-by-wire, this does not have fly-by-wire, but some sort of augmentation system, and this, of course, does. In the yaw and the pitch, so left yaw, 
right yaw, do you want stability augmentation on or off? Left pitch, right pitch, same thing. And you might want to turn it off for some reason in an emergency, for instance. This is your primary rudder trim or yaw trim here. This is a test that doesn't actually function in DCS other than to reset the other controls. And here we have a button to press to configure for takeoff trim. Next, auxiliary lighting panel. So this is actually nothing to do with lighting, but it's here because they couldn't fit it anywhere else. Haas SAS. Haas is a type of, if you like, navigation positioning system. It feeds information to the SES that we just talked about. If the Haas is detected to be giving bad information in norm, then SAS here has the ability to turn itself off for safety. If you're overriding it, then SAS no longer has the ability to turn itself off if it detects faulty data from the heart. Next, if we want to test the various lamps in the cockpit, ping. Next, same thing but for um, fire, bleed air, that there, there will be lights turning on up there at the uh, top of the dash. Night vis lights, we have lights on this aircraft that are suitable for night vision. We can have none on at all, just top on or all on. Next, refuel a status indexer light. I suppose I better go and show that. It is the brightness of that little panel there when it shows when we're refueling. Weapons station status lights is an interesting one and it is not functional in the A10C. It was for the A10A, or at least not the A10C that we have here in DCS. Next, we have an emergency wheel brake here. Ping. And we have a seat up and down. Let's head back for the inner console. So, at the back here, anti-G suit test valve. Cool, but no function in DCS. KY58RCU. This, in the real aircraft, would be a cipher for communications. <laughs> and a zero wise button in, in case you need to destroy it, uh, in case you were going to go and crash. And the buttons are all pushable, and that's very cool. At least at the time of making this video, there is no ciphering in DCS. Next is our FM radio. This is going to be about 20 to about 90 megahertz. They vary with different radios. The FM, generally speaking, it's going to be for talking to guys on the ground. These radios, we've got full tutorials on them, so we're not going to go through every button. Just but master mode, FM, AM, manual, or a preloaded frequency. Abilities here to change the frequency manually. Various presets, and those presets are set in the mission editor, which simulates having the ground crew setting them. Do we want to use the radio for, well, nothing, transmitting, receiving, or direction finding? We can use it for radio direction finding to find a transmitter rather than actually for communication. Squelch and master volume. In the same vein, we've got a UHF ultra high frequency radio here, usually used for air to air. Do we want it off? Do we want to just use the single main function of it? Do we want to use the, sing the main function of it and be able to listen to a guard frequency as well, like an emergency channel? ADF, again, direction finding, but in a different frequency band. Back on, frequencies there. Ability to manually set the frequency there. And do we want to be in the 200s, 300s, or the A, uh, regards to the first digit? Test the display. Preset channels. We want to use manual frequencies, preset frequencies, or just guard. Guard 243 here. Squelch. And a tester. That doesn't actually work. And under here, we have a load button that is functional. We have, I don't know what that's going to be. Guard squelch, maybe? But we have got no function. And this guy here, not sure what it's supposed to be. Again, no function. Again, in the same vein, VHF. So it's just a different frequency band here. Pretty much the same stuff. Do we want to operate in frequency modulation or amplitude modulation do we want uh, manual frequency tuning or preset frequency tuning do we want it off do we want it to transmit and receive communications or direction finding do we want a preset frequency from the mission editor do we want to manually tune our cells master volume and we have our squelch over here to the left you can't hear it at the moment because we're not listening to this radio tone is just a tester and we have our load button there next up is our lasty panel so we've got Starting here, our EAC, which we're usually going to have on, it is our enhanced attitude control. This is an integrated system which works with several other systems like GCAS, like autopilot, like CCIP bombing, CCRP and air-to-air, -air, possibly more. Next, our radar altimeter. Do we want it normal operation or disabled? Autopilot, engage it or disable it. And which mode do you want it to follow? 
path, which is going to be attitude hold or altitude and heading hold or just altitude hold. This is our next panel here. The main guy is obviously the throttle lever. There's actually two throttle levers there. You can move them independently if you want. You've got controls buttons on the side of them here. You can't press them with a mouse, but you can bind to them with your HOTAS or your keyboard if you want. Next common thing to have is the ability to silence your gear horn. Uh, so if you're in certain configurations, you can have the gear horn blaring away and you can silence it there. This does not work. It simulates the friction of the throttle handle there, how stiff it is to move. Uh, we've got an APU start here that we're going to use for uh, startup sequence. We have the ability here to override ignition of a certain engine, left engine, right engine. If we're going to, for instance, restart midair, we can use that to override the igniters. The middle option is normal, where it would normally be, and again, to do with engine restarting, uh, that I'm not going to talk about the specifics of, we have a motor option there. And finally, left engine and right engine, fuel flow control. How do we want to control how much fuel is being pumped into the engine? Is normal configuration where the computer decides or override, where I think it's directly linked to the handle, but two different methods there. Here we have the fuel panel. So, four main boost pumps in the aircraft. We've got left main, right main, and left wing, right wing, all on as standard. TK gate, this is a gate that will either enclose stop us transferring fuel between a left and a right associated tank or enable us to do it cross feed is an example of this is if we say lost left wing boost pump here but the right one was going it's going to allow that one right boost pump to feed both engines so you could use it for instance if you lost a boost pump for battle damage or whatever next exterior fuel tanks if we've got exterior fuel tanks loaded then in the up position here to allow draining of them and or we can turn them off there next this guy here has no function this guy here has no function in dcs this exterior light for the front air to air refueling port that refueling port do we want to allow physical access to it or do we want it closed Finally, for some reason, we may want to disable the filling of any of the four main fuel tanks, damage or whatever, and you can press that and not permit the filling of that fuel tank. And dash left side. First of all, we've got here an inoperative unit. We think it's to do with video recording, probably a relic from the A10A, but uh, we've got no function in this A10C. Anti-skid or anti-skid off. Do we want landing lights? Do we want no associated lights or do we want taxi lights? Current status of our nose gear, our left gear and our right gear. Our flap deployment indicator, 0 degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees and 30 degrees. TEMS data, this is for supplying engine data to ground staff, it's not for the pilot. Gear up, gear down handle and it will flash in certain configurations like when the gear is in travel. And a down lock override here. If we wanted to retract the gear on the ground for maintenance, then we would use that there. If we want a master arm, armed, safe, or in training mode. Gun pack, not the gun itself per se, but actually the gun stability system, arm, safe, or just gun arm. Next, our TGP is our T-Pod, power on, power off. If we've got it, then do we want to arm the laser, safe the laser, or the laser in the training mode? Altitude source here for the hard barometric or delta or radar altimeter. Regards to the HUD, day mode or night mode. It's going to vary the intensity of the display. And we want the normal HUD or a standby mode, which I can't show you. It's just a little uh, standby reticle uh, that you could use instead of the HUD. Uh, CICU on or off. This is going to assign the various data to the left MFD and the right MFD. JTRS, data link, saddle data link on or off. IFFCC integrated flight and fire control computer integrated with several other systems on off or test and test will display the status of it on the HUD next down to HARS fast direct HARS is part of the attitude and positioning system of this aircraft and we can almost kind of reset it it's not technically true but resetting it with this button is the best way I can explain it at the moment at the top here, indicator lights, nozzle steering, if that's engaged, and if the gun is ready, gun ready. Next, we've got the RWR in this aircraft, radar warning receiver, and we can change the uh, visual intensity of it there, and we've got a full tutorial on how to use this and all the symbology 
that comes on that. In a nutshell, it's for looking for radar threats. Next is our basic speedo in hundreds of knots airspeed. That needle shows where we're currently at. There is uh, the decimal counter, and that is our never exceed speed there. Uh, max gear speed, uh, 205 knots or whatever that reads with the yellow. Next, UHF. If our UHF is tuned into a preset or a manual frequency, it will show here. Currently, manual frequency 1. Next, uh, angle of attack or alpha gauge here, showing your angle of attack. Next, your digital clock here. We have the ability to tell the time as well as we can use it as a stopwatch and we can adjust it and we can uh, look at the elapsed time modes. Next is our backup attitude indicator and we can adjust that and we can cage that as necessary. Finally on the left side, coloured display, MFCD, we've got this one and of course uh, another one to the right, they're essentially interchangeable in their functions. Buttons to control various functions of them and the display of them around the side. Night mode, day mode or off and we've got full tutorials to cover them and their functions so we're not going to go through any further today. Next we'll go to the centre. First, EW, Electronic Warfare. This is a panel that displays and gives us some control of our RWR our jammer, our missile warning system, and our expendables, our chaff, and our flare. I'm not going to go any further into it because I cover it fully in the countermeasures tutorial. Next is a combined gauge. We've got our primary ADI, attitude director indicator, as well as our slip gauge here, your slip gauge, and turn rate indicator here. The ball is going to tell us our attitude, the turn indicator shows us our turn, the slip obviously shows us our your slip. As well as that we can get navigational information for instance if we were using ILS system to do an IFR approach and landing we would have a localizer and a glide slope needle that activated for active guidance and we can adjust the pitch uh, trim here of the ball. Next, HSI, just like all planes have it, Horizontal Situation Indicator. It's our analog method of navigation. So if we didn't want to use the HUD for some reason, and some features are just not available in the HUD anyway, we can tell with the different needles here and other symbology how to get our heading to a certain place, as well as that, how to stay on a certain course and not deviate from a certain course line. We can set courses here, we can do heading sets here, we know the distance from a certain point here. It features INS slash EGI, uh, TACAN, ILS, as well as radio direction finding. Again, fully covered in our navigation tutorials, won't go any further into it now. Next, more control of navigation. We've got, uh, if the best way to explain it is we've got the source of our navigation up here and the mode of our navigation down here. So for instance, currently it's set the source to EGI, that is combined INS GPS update, or we could have TISL or HARS that we sort of looked out earlier. And we have the ability to stow or enable our lines on our ADI we're talking about for navigation. Regards mode, steer point mode, anchor mode, kind of uh, regards bullseye, TACAN, Tactical Air Navigation, ILS, Instrument Landing System. And note you can have some systems on together. ILS and TACAN are designed to kind of work together. Radio Direction Finding, do you want FM or UHF? In DCS, FM only works anyway, so obviously you can't use UHF. And that's that. Further down, Auxiliary Landing Gear Handle, in case our primary fails. Uh, pedal Adjust, non-functional in DCS, obviously. And a series of circuit breakers, and it tells you the system that it's attached to there. In front of that is going to be our stick. Buttons on it cannot be clicked uh, with the mouse but they can be set to keyboard keys or buttons on the HOTAS and you've got the rudder pedals which are there which are going to be linked to my uh, gaming rudder pedals. And on to the right dash, two indicator lights here. We've got a marker here for inner outer markers. Uh, we've got a canopy indicator here. We've got a VSI here, vertical speed indicator in thousands of feet per minute Barometric altimeter, so this is based on the air pressure. We've got the absolute in feet here, 820, and a 100 needle here. It can either work with a pneumatic or electrical, and we can adjust the air pressure here, and the air pressure is gonna be in inches mercury imperial unit. We've got the second MFD here. Engine gauges, and lots of them. So left and right engine temperature, degrees 
Celsius times 100. Fan speed left and right. This is the large fan on the front of the engine. RPM in percent. Then we've got the same thing. Left and right. RPM percent. But this is the core of the engine instead of the front of the engine. Next is fuel flow rate. Left engine, right engine. Pounds per hour times 100. Next is engine oil pressure. Left and right. Pounds per square inch. Next is RPM of the APU in percent and the exhaust gas temperature of the APU 100 of Celsius. Here we have indicator for left and right hydraulic systems uh, pressure. Next our fuel gauge and to work with our fuel gauge we can vary the inquiry here internal, main, wing, exterior tank and so on and we've got thousands of pounds left and right total there and we can do a calibration test there to 6000 next the upper dash start with the eyebrows external stores jettison got a video on that we have the ability to extinguish a fire in left engine right engine and APU associated with that we can choose here from which source bottle we want to extinguish the fire next UFC up front controller allows us to interact with the aircraft alpha numerical rocker switches different ways of interacting so at the front because it's easy for the pilot to reach features also our master caution here hard heads up display tells us various symbologies and we've got a full video on the modes and symbologies of the hub next angle of attack indexer this tells us our deviance from our ideal landing angle of attack and when we are achieving that ideal landing angle of attack. Next, accelerometer. This is going to tell us, firstly, our instantaneous uh, g-force we're experiencing and our historical positive and negative g-forces for the ground crew. Next, air-to-air -air refueling indexer. This is going to tell us information regards air-to-air -air refueling, like when you're taking fuel on, like when you've got your air-to-air -air refueling gate open and so on. We've got a magnetic compass here and three mirrors up on the bow. And to the right console, we'll run down the inner console first, then the outer console. So here we have more EW, a little similar to the one on the dash. Its full name is the Countermeasures Signal Processor Panel, CMSP. Here is where we have full control of our countermeasures. We've got the ability to turn on and off and test our SO warning system our jammer, our RWR, and our dispenser. A master mode, whether we want to use this in off standby, a manual mode with full control, a semi with semi manual and semi auto, or a fully automatic control. Rarely would someone do automatic because although it's completely hands off, it's very wasteful. We have a series of buttons, a rocker, and a series of buttons here for changing the programs. How many flares you want to send out, how many chaps you want to send out, frequencies. The ability to jetson here, and just the brightness control for the display. Next is our caution light panel. So, if we need a caution about anything, like you've forgotten to do something on your startup, or your canopy's left open, or anything like that, then we're going to get a light here. There you can see test. Also, a bit like an RWR, we'll know which are the newest of the problems on the caution because they will flash until the master caution button is reset, at which point they'll go solid. Next, this guy I'm friendly here, CDU. If you fly the N10C, you're going to get lots of experience in the CDU. It's the heart of the aeroplane, mainly in terms of navigation with some auxiliary miscellaneous functions. Main screen here, buttons to press here for various functions that are listed along the side of the screen and various menus here and various alpha numeric inputs and some rocker switches as well. Note also it's a real pain in the backside to view the screen down here so you can have this repeated up on uh, either of the MFCDs above. Next is auxiliary avionics panel so what we've got here is the CDU power on or off, the EGI power on or off that is the main navigation system of this aircraft there are many but this is the INS GPS update here the ability to increment steer points, steer points up and down with this rocker here. We can change which page the CDU displays and you 
can see that there, position, steer, and so on. And we have the steer point dial here. Do we want to be able to manipulate steer points from within the mission, or mark points, or flight plan? Next, ILS, uh, instrument landing system. We tune into a station here, and here is the station we've tuned into. Uh, in megahertz, we've got that knob. We can change the decimals. That knob, where we can change the, you know, the main digits. And I've got a ring there around the outside. We can change the volume, and a ring there, where we can turn the power on and off. Next, TACAN, tactical air navigation, another navigation method. We've got the channel that we can set here. Uh, we can change the numerical value there. We can change the uh, X-ray or Yankee, and we also have a little ring around the outside here to uh, change that digit there. We can turn volume of the Morse code identifier up or down and a master mode. We can have it off, receive only, transmit receive, air to air receive only, and air to air transmit receive. Next is the helmet mounted display panel and all we've got is this one switch active. We can turn it on, off or battery option. Next is something I'm interested in learning, but I haven't learnt yet, so we'll just have a quick look at it. It's the HARS panel here. You may have noticed earlier in the video we mentioned HARS is part of the Integrated Navigation System. It stands for Heading and Attitude Reference System, features in other planes also. In terms of controls, as far as I understand, we can push this button in to quickly align the HARS system, and we can view the results on the ADI and HSI. Uh, we also have the ability of the heading adjust here, a knob that we can turn left and right. Next, magnetic variation, which is always going to be something that you will need to understand in any aircraft. And we can have zero, plus 15 degrees, or minus 15 degrees. Now, why it's plus 15, zero, and minus 15, I have no idea at all why it's not a dial where we can choose any um, kind of decimal degrees. Uh, escapes me, so I'd like to know your thoughts on why we only have those options. Next, we can select the hemisphere we're operating, the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Next, do we want to use the HARS slaved? In that case, it's going to be a slave to the gyro stabilized magnetic, magnetic compass or directional gyroscope mode, in which case we can actually adjust it. But we're going to leave it caged, which is the normal setting. Finally, we have a latitude correction dial. It's very normal for our system to drift as time goes on, it's uh, anything that's not GPS updated and the HARS is not GPS updated, then we can use this to compensate for any drift in the latitude. Let's shift upwards. We've got interior exterior lighting, a floodlight, it's internal, not very bright in the day, but you can see it at night obviously. Uh, the consoles, so right console, left console, interior lighting. Next, flight instruments, uh, which are kind of the central middle part of the dash, as I call them. Next, engine instruments on the right of the dash and auxiliary instruments and mustn't forget this lights for the accelerometer and the compass up uh, either side of the HUD and the signal lights uh, brightness dim or bright so that's these guys here uh, exterior nose illumination literally illuminates the nose of the aircraft for formation flying and or air to air refueling formation lights here obviously uh, anti-collision lights just off and on and position lights steady off or flash next we move up to the environment panel best zoom in for this most of this is not modeled in dcs but we'll go through it anyway pitot heat that is uh, modeled you will freeze your pitot if you don't use the heat when it's cold and this stuff as far as i'm aware is not modeled temperature pressure control flow level control air conditioner manual or auto temperature level control Main air supply, uh, bleed air on or off. Windshield rain remove, not modelled, but it's pretty cool. It's like a what is it? RC? It's like a solution you can blow on the canopy. Uh, yeah, on the windshield. On the windshield to clear that. Uh, not modelled at the moment. Canopy defog, not modelled at the moment, but it probably will be added. It's started to be added in various planes, so just be advised. Some of this may be added in terms of functionality as, as time goes on. And windshield defog, uh, de-ice. Not ordered yet, but again, maybe added at some point. We've got the obligatory cabin pressure in thousands of feet equivalent altitude there. And we mustn't miss canopy disengage. It's kind of like a lock, uh, just so we can kind of lock the canopy, uh, prevents us from uh, manipulating the canopy. We've got amount of liquid oxygen in litres and the ability to test, run a test on that. 
Come to the O2 panel, we've got oxygen supply on or off. That is modelled, so you're going to want that on. Whether you want normal oxygen or 100% oxygen, pretty sure that's not modelled. And my understanding is, it, with harsh manoeuvres, dogfights and stuff, uh, pilots go to 100% oxygen. Let me know if you know differently, but that's my understanding of it. Oxygen supply, uh, pressure in PSI. That wants to read a positive figure. We've got uh, this chap here, whether we want to run our oxygen flow as normal, emergency or test mask. As far as I'm aware, that doesn't do anything. We've got a flow indicator here, which will just, you know, blank, uh, black and white. And that's it for that panel. And for our last panel, battery power. We're going to want that on. AC uh, generator power. So alternating current left and right. And we're going to have those both on. APU generator power. So if we're going to have our... APU on, which we don't at the moment, and we're going to run off of the power from that, then we're going to want him turned on. Inverter, uh, it's going to be on the on or standby position all the time to feed our a anything that requires our alternating current. And an emergency floodlight in case all goes to hell, ping, emergency floodlight. We have got our canopy open, our canopy closed. We can extend our boarding ladder. Which is pretty smart, and then we can unlock the Canopy Jetson button and then pull it. If we want to retract our boarding ladder, ground crew, parent menu, ground crew, stow boarding ladder. And I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier, so just in case, we've got the ability to arm the ejection seat there. And that is the A10C2 cockpit. Hope that was useful and see you later.